Coach, why don't you just talk about the match and uh, your overall thoughts? Uh, phenomenal match by both teams, um, both deserving to be here this evening at this platform. Um, my players just came out ready to play. We've, we've been practicing for this moment for more than just a couple of days. This goes well beyond the selection show. This goes back to September of all the sacrifices they had to make to be here. And man, super proud of, uh, of not only how they are carrying themselves on, on, the, in the, on the court, but just how they are continuing to even grow together even more so, which, uh, you know, for us, we thought it couldn't get any more cohesive enough, but they're showing uh, a type of chemistry on the, on the court that's um, unique to the rest of the semifinal teams, as well as it's, it's one that uh, I think will only continue to, uh, to grow as we get into this final. So ecstatic, of course, exhausted. You know, more scouting to come, um, but we, we know that uh, with New Paltz, we've played them before. We know what they have to offer, and uh, yeah, just excited to be here as always. Uh, Justin, uh, uh, this, describe, uh, you know, you guys have, have, have had to be road warriors, right? You know, essentially, that's the, that's the setup. Uh, how does that prepare you guys for virtually any situation uh, different than, let's say, if you were an East Coast team or... Um, it was just a different setup. Uh, you guys have the most unique situation, and, and how does that impact things maybe on the floor? Yeah, we, all, f all four years that I've been here, we've had to travel a bunch. Uh, back east, you know, we play six, seven games in a weekend against teams at their homes. They bring their home crowd, so it really prepares us for environments like this where Stevens brings out their fans, and they did a fantastic job tonight. We're already locked in, and we've been in that scenario before, and our bench knows what to do. We were lucky enough to have some fans come out tonight. They were really great for us, and we just got to dial in, focus on the game, and we executed great. And Justin, you have a fifth year. Have you decided yet if you're coming back, or is tomorrow kind of potentially your last if maybe that changes your mindset in some ways? Uh, it'll depend if the NCAA will let me come back. I gotcha, I've okay. submitted the paperwork, so I'm kind of waiting on that. Uh, exactly. But I would mean, I don't know how you couldn't come back to a team like this. They're really great. Exactly. Uh, Ray, uh, describe your involvement. So I, I guess you grew a couple inches from high school to, you know, to, um, to, to college. Uh, you were middle and playing like, uh, like someone that, that has been playing outside forever. Uh, how would you kind of describe your, your arc as a player uh, and to be able to you know, put up 20 kills from all over, uh, all over the floor? Uh, maybe that's something you wouldn't have done maybe as a freshman. Uh, yeah, I've grown a lot uh, in my time here. Um, I was a middle since ninth grade when I started volleyball. Um, and this year I've had to just put on different hats for what the team has needed. Um, and it's been really good. I think that what helps me perform really well on the court is I know that everybody has the confidence in me to do, um, to go out there and play a position that I haven't really played before. Um, mm -hmm. Our coaches have, have allowed me to get a lot of reps um, and allowed me to just try new things at practice and, all, and just grow as a player. Um, if, I, if you had asked me last year if I would be here, um, I would not have told you that I'd be playing outside in the mm -hmm. national championship. Um, but it's just, the way the, it's just the way that things have happened, and I wouldn't have it any other way. Coach, you were in this situation in 2012, you know, being in the national, national semifinals as a player. What did you tell your guys, you know, getting to this situation now and just, you know, going from your personal experience? Yeah, uh, everything that you thought was enough is just not. Um, f from my personal experience, you know, we felt – Going into the semifinals uh, against Carthage, same thing. We had seen them play before. We felt comfortable, all those things. It's just the adversity that uh, lies unforeseen is always naturally there. And tonight we told our guys to go find the adversity and don't wait, it come, don't wait for it to come to us. And, you know, I, I really like that aggressive approach. These guys have instilled some of my philosophies now for four years. So this, the senior class is more taking charge of the mental game and um, – and how our resilience on the court, you know, affects everyone on, on the bench. And so against a team like New Paltz, we know naturally a, a team that's putting up those kind of numbers are going to give us, um, you know, a run for our money. But at the same time, if we continue to remind ourselves why we're playing this game and, and who got us here to this point, you know, we, we ultimately just find ourselves right back to square one where we were in September. And, um, you know, playing to, playing to our strength, I think it just kind of finds uh, – that right now we are peaking at the right moment, as we've talked about in, bef in previous press conferences. And, um, you know, the resilience has only shown um, as playoffs have gone on. So the adversity hasn't changed. You know, our game hasn't changed. 
um, just our mental fortitude has just continued to sharpen. And this is a question for both of the guys. I mean, the five set here against Kane, you know, you guys played like you had nothing to lose. Same thing again tonight. I mean, how do you just stay focused and just block everything out? Uh, our coaches, for sure, definitely do a great job giving us a scouting report. Um, so we have something to really focus on during the game. Every play, every ball we see, we know what we're focusing on, and we have a directive. And I think that's something that's really great to have. Yeah, we also um, we we learned from our losses, and we've had we've had an up and down season, and we've had we have the most losses in the NCAA tournament as the 14 team pool, um, but we learned from every single one of those. We came in here a few weeks ago, and we played Keene, um, and we lost in five, but we had won the first two sets, and we controlled the game similar to how we controlled the game today. Um, and we have learned, and we've grown from that, and that allowed us to, today, when the third set was not going our way, to sit, to, and to, like, to call the timeout, look at each other, reset, and then come out and get five straight points. So I think that um, we really have nothing to lose. We're so grateful to be in this position, to be where we are right now. And we're not worried about losing because we've done so much this season already. We're just going to go out there and try our hardest. Coach, can you talk a bit about how your freshmen have grown up just over the past month? It all comes back to our practices. Um, you know, we practice to fail. We train to fail. We train in uncomfortable environments uh, as our season naturally show, has shown us. Um, so for our freshmen to come in every day knowing that they're going to work to their hardest and to their potential only to fail, uh, you know, it definitely is a psychological game after a while. We iron that out in the beginning stages with as much feedback as possible and the reps. Um, but that confidence just naturally comes from within. Um, it's not anything that we're necessarily telling them to do anything different. Um, they're on the squad for a certain reason, and that's that they have a great touch on the ball and a great skill set in the game. And when that just kind of naturally arises, whether in competitive practices or in our strength and conditioning, or even just in our downtime, uh, we're seeing that it's more than just a starting six or seven that are prepping themselves for a championship match. So when you have 16, I guess we including coaches, 19 believers in the locker room, um, it's more than just contagious to want to go out there and run through a wall for the next guy, you know, the, the guy next to you. Um, so it's great to have a full squad that is as committed and bought in as they are. Paul, I just looked it up. It's tomorrow's 104 days since you played New Paltz. So what what do you remember about that match, and what do you think are there things you think you can take away from that match to apply to Mars strategy? Nothing really changes for us. Um, yeah, we're, our game plan, our defensive end, our our offense is just it remains the same, even a, against a, a physical team like New Paltz. And, and they will get their fair share of, of blocks and kills against us, and so will we. It's just going to be those moments of decisiveness, either out of timeouts or the small points of free balls, down balls, you know, the, the ones that kind of pl players at this level almost overlook as easy points, as we call them. Those are the points that are really going to come in clutch in the, in the late stretch of the sets. And uh, I believe, like Ray said, we've got nothing to lose. So we'll be coming out swinging, and we'll be willing to take a couple punches, keep getting back up, and t giving some more. So um, yeah, we're ready. We're ready to get going.